If you need a lot of time to build a form, now there is a tool called Form Builder and now you can build a form 10 times faster. So let's take a look right here. As you can see here, I can just click any input I want. I can go to code and just copy and paste to my code right now. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do all of this right here. And as you can see, if I submit, it also works with validation. Yep, let's just get started. First, of course, we need to define what kind of form we need to build, right? So in this video, we are going to create a full name, email address, password, mobile number, and also checkbox for term and condition. All right, so let's go to the set and form builder. Let's just go to playground, click that. And then here, as you can see, we have a lot of option for the input field. And then now here it's just empty, right? So first, of course, because this is a full name, we need to create an input text right here, right? So as you can see, this is the preview of our uh, form. And as you can see, you have the JSON format and also the code format right here. This is that we are going to copy and paste basically. All right, so let's go back to the preview, right? And then the next thing is we need to change the label, we need to change the placeholder and also this description here. So let's click this icon right here. And for the label, I'm gonna change, down, change that to full name for the description. Let's just remove that. I'm going to make it empty. For the placeholder, I'm gonna say, uh, for example, let's say John Doe, class name. I'm not really sure, but this class name is not really works. If I do background red uh, 500, for example, and the name is basically name of the field, right? In this case, I'm gonna say full underscore name. And if I click save change, as you can see, basically the color is not really apply on this code really. As you can see, the form field right here, there's no background red, okay? So it mean this is class name, it's not just work for now. I think just remove that. All right, that's how we create the full name field, really simple. Next, let's create the email input field. Of course, we need to use input and then we need to change the type into email, right? For the label, I'm gonna use email addresses. And for the description, I'm gonna use, we will send verification emails to this address. And for the placeholder, I'm gonna change that to example at uh, domain.com, for example. And for the name of the field, I'm gonna change that to just email. So the type is email and then save. Great, now we have this two input field, really, really great. So next I'm going to do a password, right? For the password, there is a one field here called password. So just click on that and now we have password, right? It's just play around with the level. I'm gonna change that to create password. And for the description, I'm gonna use use at least eight characters, including a letter and numbers, whatever you want, basically. And for the placeholder, of course, I'm gonna say like enter a strong password. And for the name, I'm gonna say password. And then let's save change. Great, now we have three input field. And the next thing is let's create the mobile number. Let's scroll down and I believe we have bone right here, right? And then as you can see, we, we basically also have this uh, country. That's really amazing. So let's go to the label first. I think I'm gonna change that to mobile number. And for the description, let's say enter a valid phone number. And for the placeholder, just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten whatever. And for the name, we can say mobile underscore number. Let's save change. And now we have this mobile number down here. As you can see, I can change to my beautiful country, my Indonesian right here. I can do egg on whatever. All right, pretty cool. If I hit submit, as you can see, it works with validation, of course. Really, really great. So the last thing is we need to create a text box for terms and condition. For the label here, I'm going to remove it and change that to agree to terms and condition. For the description, I just want to remove it. Placeholder, remove it. And for the name, I'm going to use terms, right? So let's click save. And now we have this agree to terms and condition. Now, as you can see here on the code, we need to just copy and paste that basically. So let's just copy that and go to the VS code. So basically here, I already installed the Next.js 14 with setcn. I use Next.js 14, that's because I don't want to see a lot of error on my terminal, to be honest. As you can see here, um, it's still not compatible really with the React 19. So I think just fine to use a React 15 if you want. 
okay just to make sure when you install you need to uh, basically add this dash dash force when you install any package all right so let's go back on the terminal and here this is basically just a brand new next.js so i'm not at any kind of things right here so if i do npm run dev let's open localhost 3000 right so this is what we have so let's go back to vs code and we need to create a component folder here and then inside the component folder i'm going to create register dash form.tsx and i just want to paste code from the right generated right here right just copy and paste that right here and then it's too big right and then now as you can see there's a lot of error to be honest and then we are going to fix that and then first we are going to install the form so first what we're going to do is let's just install a form from the set cn i'm going to copy this with npm and go to terminal and paste that right here so this is basically we install the react hook form the hook form result result and the result right here it will install by doing np npx at cn at letters at form so let's take a look right here basically the structure of the code is really really similar like this set cn documentation here so if you're familiar with this set cn i think you are really good if you want to use this form builder right here all right it's done great so now as you can see any error for this use form is gone for this zot is gone so now we need to install it sooner sooner is basically a toast notification and this is really really cool as you can see here it's look like this right so let's just copy the command and then go back to terminal and hit enter how to use that it's super simple we need to import the toaster and paste that to the root of your component so in this case i'm going to put that on the layout and then i'm going to paste that under the children and of course this should become from the sooner like that so now let's go back to register form and yep there's still any error in here and as you can see it's import use state but we not really use that so let's remove it and also the cn we need we don't really use that and also we need to add input component so we can do npx set cn at lettuce add input like that and also we need to uh, use textbox as well as you can see right here right so let's hit enter so now the error is gone for the checkbox and for the input next we need to create the password input and also the pawn input if you go back to the documentation as you can see here on the top right here this form is include special component add the component in your directory so let's click password so this basically will open the github as you can see here so yep we need to create the password dash input dot dsx file so let's go to in ui right here and then let's create the password dash input dot tsx and then i just want to copy all of this code right here let's copy that and then paste that right here and then save and just closing that now the password input should be not showing the error nice so now let's working with the point input let's go back and then here click the pawn input it's going to be open the set cn dash pawn dash input dot app and then what the first we need to do um yep we need to install all this uh component basically so let first open the terminal we can do npx set cn at lettuce and then add we are going to add the input we already install it button we already install it command let's copy that name and paste that right here also we need to install the toes copy and paste we need to install the pop over right paste that right here and also we need to install this scroll area so let's copy and paste that let's hit enter so basically if you take a look right here it's installed using npx set cn dash ui at lettuce it's not going to work by the way so now we can use npx set cn at lettuce and then the name of the component you need to install right just make sure you not just copy this one but you use set cn at lettuce just remove this dash ui right here all right so next we need to install this uh, component right here react upon number input so let's go back to the terminal and paste it right here so next we need to create this component here upon input.tsx let's go to ui and then create that uh, component and then yep we need to just copy and paste all this content right here and hopefully there's no error nice and then now hopefully i'm going to comment and uncomment this one and there's no error 
Nice. So now let's do npm run dev to start a localhost 3000. And then uh, we get some error here. This is basically ESLint error, I believe. Yep. Let's quick replace that with this symbol here. And then now let's open localhost 3000. What we have, of course, now there's no happening here because we not yet import the component. So let's change the component name to register form. And then we are going to import that on the page. So let's uh, basically remove all the div right here, right? So I'm going to use another div and put that register form inside the div right here. Just make sure we, imp we just import that from the components slash register form. And then now let's take a look what we have. Let's refresh and hopefully, here we go. Nice. So let's first add a maximal width here. And also I'm going to make it on the center and add some margin top save and here we go looks much better so i think i'm going to increase the space between the input fields so let's go back to register form and then here i believe we have a space y i'm going to set that to four now let's save and here we go all right this is more better for the submit here you can change whatever you want basically for example i'm going to say class name into width full which is 100 percent width and this is what we have, right? If I click submit, as you can see, the validation is just works. And if you want to basically change the validation, of course you can do that. Let's go back here and for the, let me see, form schema right here, you can add another validation on this full name. For example, I'm gonna add a minimal value and also the maximal character on the full name, for example. As you can see here, if I type in two and i hit submit as you can see full name must have at least three characters right because we adding this line right here and the maximal is 100 of course and also for the email here i can add another validation as well for example let's say dot email so we get the valid email address if the string is not valid email i can do please provide a valid email address for the error message and also i can do that for the password mobile number and also for the terms as you can see here for the password i adding a lot of um, condition in here and for the terms when we click that um just this right here the text box uh, let me see the text box right here if i click that the value is going to be true otherwise it should be showing this message error you must accept the term and condition so let's try to refresh and see if i hit submit as you can see we get a lot of error if i do let's say a random password right we should have uppercase and also special character here we go and for the number i can do random things here if I hit submit, as you can see, we get the value. But as you can see, the term is not required for now. I'm not sure. So let's uh, scroll down here. The term text box is not worked. That is because here the default value is true. We need to change that to false. And then now let's try to fill all the input field here. And then for the password, I'm going to do random things here. And for the number, hit submit. As you can see, we need to at least have a lower case. Here we go and then for the phone number and as you can see here we have the you must accept the term and condition in order to submit the form right if i click that and hit submit and as you can see we get the data on the console on the toast notification all right super great and and yeah i think this is a really great tools for building a form as you can see here because there's a lot of another features. As you can see here, signature input, for example. So we can just input the signature right here. And for example, another thing for, um, as you can see here, the if I do today, for example, and then now if I click this one, it's get the date for today, which is great. And also for the date time picker, we also can use that, as you can see here. We can go wherever the date we want really great you can change this to pm for example and then uh, another thing file input it's also right here and then input otp it's also right here right that's a lot of options that you can use basically all right and i hope this video helpful guys and um yeah just play around with this form builder and thanks full for the creator of this uh, website which is um let me see who is the guy that created this one hassan harman thanks bro for this beautiful form builder 
and yep this is open source of course you can see how this guy create all this website right here check that out so i hope this video helpful guys and see you on the next one